Hello, hello and welcome to a Hit Hard News special and this is the first time we have done a special attraction for a special event and and we're going to be talking about all things David Hay, Tony Bellew and and the event itself happening at the London O2 Arena live on Sky Sports pay-per-view this Saturday. And I'm very pleased to say that I am joined by my good friend, a good friend of Hit Hard News, a very, very knowledgeable person, and safe to say the York Hall should be his second home because he's always there every time I talk to him. I'm joined by my good friend Dan Frost from Counterpunch Podcast. How are you, Dan? Yeah, good, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Pleasure, mate. Pleasure. No worries. Uh, lot, so, I like the uh, I like the, uh, the the York Hall spin. Oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I do feel like it's somewhere uh, I should camp up sometimes. But yeah, it's the home of boxing. Not a bad seat in the house. It is the home of boxing, and you go there several times a year. Hence, why I said it should be your second home. So anyway, so anyway, let's kick things off. So, as I previously mentioned. David Hay, Tony Bellew. A fight of vast intrigue. A lot of people were shocked that this fight actually pulled off. I believe Tony Bellew started talking about this fight after the Marius Masterneck fight in December 2015 when he captured the European title where where it was in the now famous IFL TV interview where the term Berman's a bitch first reached our airwaves. So Dan, so Dan, first of all, I'm just going to say, at the time, was you shocked that Tony Bell, you was mentioning the great name of David Hay? He is a great name in boxing circles, so he achieved a lot. So, did, so did you first think initially it was just a marketing ploy from Tony Bell to get his name out there into big nights, into big fights and big nights? It's already a big enough name. But was you surprised that Tony Bell was calling him out when at the time David Hay was in the obscurity of things in the boxing world? He hadn't fought. There was no talks of a comeback as such of any concrete proof. And to now, that it's a reality. So through the chain of events, was he surprised that it actually came off? Yeah, of course. I mean, there was there was, there was no kind of indication because they're both campaigning at different weights, albeit only, only a, a, a different one weight difference. It was initially something I was surprised about because they... Uh, David Hay has obviously been in active, as we know, for three and a bit years, uh, through to, to surgery, shoulder surgery. So it was, it, it was unusual, um, uh, outburst, at least say, or statement from Bellew to even mention David Hay. Um, so my only thinking is, as you say, it was to get himself, uh, some, get him in the limelight, you know, to, 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 to uh, uh, no, um, to push his profile up as a sense. So, uh, I mean, Tony Bellew has uh, been a now established cruiserweight champion. He's he's got other options at the weight, uh, some very good options. So it was it was an unusual uh, <laughs> uh, statement at the time. Um, but uh, especially with uh, I think on the back of winning the world title and his Steinlein Creed, I think Tony Bellew's um, stock and uh, um, profile has, has, has risen. So. Yeah, uh, um, very shot, uh, but um, I didn't think really at the time anything would come of it because it was only literally Tony Bellew who was pushing for the fight, you know, the, the, the names, everything else. And uh, um, but no, it was something I I didn't see coming and uh, surprised when it got uh, announced that. Well, well, yes and no, I was surprised, but um, that, that it's got announced. But it's a money fight for Tony Bellew. Mm-hmm. That's what it is, you know. Um, a very big money fight and uh, something he wouldn't get uh, when he campaigning at cruiserweight. So uh, it, well, here we are now. 
yes, in yes, indeed, here we are now. Like I give you, at the time I couldn't really see this fight coming off. I thought, as much as I love Tony Bellew as a fighter and main and mainly as a person, it was like. Oh come on, Dave. David, I uh, uh, come on, Tony. Sorry, David's been retired for three and a bit years. Like, could you just like, you know, rein it in a little bit? Don't get above your station in a sense. But all that in mind, as we said, we're all here now. Fight night Saturday, and so since the fight got announced in December, I believe. Up until now, the media hype and attention has slowly got bigger and bigger and bigger, like most pay-per-views, to be perfectly fair, in the UK. But this pay-per-view build-up has been, in my opinion, in a sense, very vicious from both sides. There's a lot of seemingly genuine bad blood, a lot of bad yeah. blood, a lot of what of lot of spiteful comments and some truly, in my opinion, barring reflecting on the last 12 months as such, some of just purely disgusting comments. We've had comments from, I'm not going to sound like I'm going to pick on David Hare, but I've got to, but some of his comments have been really, really distasteful. Oh, I'm going to, I cannot wait to put you in hospital, put lay you out unconscious and leave you seriously damaged in a, in a way. And I just think it's just been bad form from Tony, uh, from David Hay on that sense. Like, if you like, reflect back on the last 12 months, we've had some terrible tragedies in boxing in this country. And some, and some, we've had... A, a fatality and we've had all the stuff which has gone off with Nick Blackwell as well I just think do you agree that it's been a little bit distasteful with the comments from David Hay but but could it could it be fair to say that Tony Bell who's actually got under David Hay's skin to cause that sort of reaction yeah of course I mean um, I mean he's he's obviously he's no stranger to to, um saying a few things out of line here. I mean, also everyone remembers the uh, build-up for the Klitschko fight with the severed head T-shirts. It's, it, it, it's, um, it's unusual. I mean, I've, I've followed David Hayes since, pretty much since his debut, where I've, I've attended in most of his fights. So it, he's, I've never seen him, got to say, this this rattled, really, um, as, as Tony Bellew has, has, has got him. So, um, but... Was I understand the history with these two is um, Tony Bellew was brought in as a sparring partner in around 2005 for, for David Hay when he was um, preparing for a fight against the then British and Commonwealth Cruiserweight champion Mark Hobson. That's actually a fight I was going to attend. Uh, unfortunately, that got cancelled um, f- for no reason um, was given at the time. Uh, and Hobson was obviously was basically disappointed. I, I recall that, but. As, as Tony Bellew's side of things has, has, has surfaced, he, uh, from his his point of view, he uh, got the best over David Haynes' spine, uh, knocked him down, and uh, I think that another a spine session included um, David Price as well. So mm-hmm. this is what this is where this originally has stemmed from. Tony Bellew has has used this to initiate this this build up, the, the, uh, this this trash talk, um, which is obviously is, is he's got his wish, and David Hay has. has um, bit the bullet. So, um, what, what we make of those sparring sessions, I don't know. Uh, what is the truth? Mm-hmm. But, uh, but oh, um, they're both the, the, the build up initially with the fight was announced. I, I was kind of well, everyone's had his opinion on this fight. Let's face it, I know the large majority of people are going with David Hay, <clears> and rightly so. But, um, it's, uh, I'm losing my train of thought. He, uh, as as the uh, three months have progressed, the kind of the build up has it, it's made it more of an intriguing fight to me. Not, mm-hmm. uh, it's more intriguing as an event. It's hard to explain, but not as a competitive fight. Uh, mm-hmm. But um, yeah, uh, some interesting trash talk. Although I know David Hayes said some um, wild things on Soccer AM last Saturday, caving his head in 
and things like that. And as, as, as you say, everyone knows with, with boxing, it's we've had a few shocking months with um, obviously with Nick Blackwell, Mike Towell, and um, uh, the, uh, God, um, the guy for George Groves. Um, Gutenek. Good, thank you, Gutenek at Wembley. He's um, he thank God uh, we, we're covered, but uh, it, yeah, a bit bit distasteful, distasteful from David Hay. Um, but Bellew obviously you know, hasn't been an angel to build up either. Mm-hmm. But they're both building a, a pay per view fight in the off the back of this, and uh, they're both lining their pockets. Mm, talking of talking of the build up, as you are more than likely probably aware that the rumour which was circulated by the Sun newspaper, Talksport, and many other outlets, uh, something about a Achilles injury. Yeah, which so to me which like to me at the time I thought if it was a if it was on an Achilles injury you and from the parts after done a little bit of digging, this was an injury which was looked at a couple of weeks ago, talking back in middle of January. So nothing throughout February more back in uh, more middle of January. Like would be a little bit far fetched to go and see a specialist now as such. It just it just something about that didn't make sense. But what it's since transpired through Eddie Hearn in in regard and said no, nothing to worry about. And if there was an injury, I would know about it. So that, was that, it just was, rumors? That was a report, wasn't it? That he apparently flown to Munich uh, to see a specialist uh, or all these specialists he's been dealing with since the um since the injury. I don't, yes. I don't know where that stemmed from, but uh, I'd to see that today. I think it's a lot of people's reactions was a lot of a, a lot of disappointment mm-hmm. that this could be um, this could be cancelled. Um, so it's it's part of boxes, and these rumours fly about, and um, I think it stemmed from the Sun newspaper initially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, like the only official quotes I have seen, which is from his good friend Joe Fornier saying, oh, it's just a break to get away from the media circus happening in the UK. But what I will say is the specialist in question, which is Dr. Hans Furbacher, I'm not going to pronounce the other middle name because it is longer (laughs) than my arm, is that he is the same, is, is the same, in specialist and surgeon which operated on David Hayes' shoulder, by the way, in Munich. So we do have a good working relationship, clearly been obviously done a lot of work together, probably even previous to 2013. So it could just be nothing more than just like a yeah. a private medical as such, like can I just have a click over once over kind of thing. But that's unusual, isn't like, it, um, at David, at Munich? Because <laughs> Hayes got a bit of a, uh, a bit of a a background with uh, with with Munich was uh, with the, with the Gisor draw after <laughs> so uh, you know all places but um no I mean it's it's rumours so yeah I mean good, yeah, it, good 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 for the fans it's it's uh it's it's proved to be um rubbish uh, and as I understand they're both in a public workout in uh, Yo two tonight so. Yes, it, and yes, indeed, and and at this time, Tony Bell, who's currently undergoing his media workout for David Hayes, scheduled to have his at 8.20, by the way. And so, so they will not beat about the bush. The fight itself. Is it a complete mismatch to you? It, it's, how can I put this really... I'm not going to say it's a complete mismatch, even though I think I've said it in the build-up to this. I mean, my taking is, I mean, let's let's face it, David Hay, yes, he's been inactive. He's been a fully-fledged heavyweight since uh, 2009 uh, when he, um, well, actually, no, until 2007, he he had a fight before he fought for the Cruiserweight title, um, Thomas Bonin, uh, upon in, in, um, in Wembley. So, Pretty much nine years he's been operating at heavyweight, and what I look at it as, in my opinion, David Hay is in terms of every level of, of in the sport, he, he's better than Bellew, punching power, speed, technique, um, 
footwork. I think he he just he's better than Bellew and everything. And the fact he's offering the heavyweight won a world title, it it, it just it it's that's what spells a mismatch to me. Yes, Tony Bellew he's looked since he stepped up to cruiserweight, which is the more natural weight, he's um he's he's looked better. I think he's got underrated power. Uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, cruiserweight, he's brought up. He's a big lad, uh, cruiserweight as it is. So that 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 that's goes with him good stead, really. But operating against David Hay, I you know, and, and it's hard to tell really as well because the two last two opponents that Hay has fought, you know, they, they they turned up and just and just rolled over. So um, this is without a doubt this, and it's not it's not difficult really. This is the most difficult opponent David Hay has fought since um, Derek Chisora in 2012 mm-hmm. I would I, I would not going to say it's a total mismatch but I, um, it's, it's all going in David Hayes' favour I don't mm-hmm. care what people say he's, he's been training for this out, uh, seriously he's he said a lot of stuff and he's going to look stupid you know he's going to yeah. if, he, if he can't pull this off I think all, a lot of um, a lot of the stuff out in Miami the nightclubs everything else it's, I, I, I reckon it's been done to wind to turn your belly up mind games just um, for sure it's for sure. He knows that he's been winding belly up and his team. So, uh, <laughs> um, so that's how David Hay rolls. But no, I, I, I you know, on the flip side for Tony Bellew, what he can hopefully benefit on is apparently he reckons David Hay's poor stamina and if this injury resurfaces. But he's got to make a dogfight of it for me. Hay is, as we know, he's dangerous early. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just got to rough David Hay up, uh, you know, boxing from range. Don't think it's going to work. He's got to get in there. He's got to just get in the dogfight and try and get David Hay into the later rounds. And um, that's a big ask as well with someone like David Hay's um, uh, power and, and that natural athleticism. So uh, um, I think really, to me, I'd be very, I'd be very impressed with David, um, if Tony Bellew made it past four rounds. Right. And that's right. so, uh, but uh, and that's 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 the uh, reality of it with with, with me. Um, but we'll we I think we'll we'll learn a lot more about David Hay on Saturday night. And in in indeed. Now that you've had your say, it's now time for mine. So <laughs> I I. I agree with you that Tony Bell, you if he gets if he gets David Hay past four or five rounds, it will go a long way in Tony Bellew's favour because, as they said, the 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 common thought is amongst people such as ourselves and the boxing analysts and commentators is the question marks surrounding David Hayes. Uh, stamina he's had relative stamina issues before one which springs straight to mind is his fight against Cal Thompson which he got stopped Mm. knocked out whatever way you want to put it but that fight was so long ago you cannot really take that into consideration this was back in this was back when BBC was still showing boxing and how long have BBC been showing boxing since then None well, at all. It's been off the screens for 13 years. <laughs> but, yeah, but I think, sorry, on, on, on what you say about the stamina, this is something that David Hayes addressed due to the criticism and everything else. So mm-hmm. we'll learn again. We'll learn from that, see what David Hayes has. Uh, but, but as he overlooks Tony Bellew, mm-hmm. uh, and, and he's not training, we don't know yet. Yeah, don't know yet. We'll find out more about that. But as you said, David Hay on paper... He should be the better technical boxer than Tony Bellew in almost every single department. I agree with you on that sentiment, but the but as there's a big question mark surrounding David here, is he's been out the ring for essentially three and a bit years. Those last two guys, the 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 Cobra and Mark Demare. Honestly, the first time I heard the Cobra fighting David Hay, I thought that Cal Froch had put on a ton of weight. Honestly, that was my general opinion. But he's been out of the ring for so long. 
clearly in that period of time he's been focusing on let's just say getting his shoulder right back together and not really focusing and concentrating on the boxing so of course he's had to have time to sharpen up his tools before we got back in the ring in january of last year i would be an idiot not to think that he's been in the gym sharpening up his tools with shane mcguigan but it's been out of the ring so long how much of his physical attributes has he got left from from the prime david hay of 2012 2011 2010, 2009, in, in, in the periods of his away days and his early heavyweight days, how much has he realistically got left? The, the power will still there be evidently, because it's been that is, as he said, is the most seasoned and accustomed heavyweight. That is without question. He will always have that power, in my opinion. But, but the way he but the but the way he develops the way he throws that power, it's not like a natural legitimate heavyweight where they just naturally big. That was done with explosivity, and speed, and nerve rack, and nerve reaction and powerful shoulder rotation cuffs. How has he still got them abilities? Has he still got the nimble footwork with his sniping movement, which was mastered under Adam Booth? Sniping, leaning back almost, a little bit like a Sugar Ray mm. Leonard, Sugar Ray... Yeah, it, Robert the crouch. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the crouch, crouch, yeah, which, yeah. Which, which had worked so well. But he's trained under Shane McGuigan now. Again, a brilliant coach, up-and-coming coach. And everything, but again, another coach who hasn't trained a, a heavyweight, so he's going to be coming into the unknown himself. But I, but, but, but with David Hay, as he rightly said, on paper he beats he beats Tony Bellew proper like skill wise all day long, but what's left? That's just the Big grey, that is just the big grey cloud around him. Is it just the aura and the limelight he's craving? Yeah, I mean, when I said earlier that, you know, it's, In, it's not a total mismatch, it's not a total mismatch. I was saying more in a sense that Tony Bellew has a chance in the fact that he's been an active fighter, um, a cruiserweight, fought some good names at cruiserweight. Um, he hasn't been active, so that kind of brings the fight a bit more, a, a bit, bit, bit more even for me. Well, say, well, not say even, but it kind of makes goes in more in Tony Bellew's favour. I think the big, I think the thing we're trying to say here is David Hay. This, this is the first test David Hay, Hay has had, mm-hmm. even though he's a cruiserweight um, uh, since since uh, Derek Jazor, um four and a half years ago, nearly five years ago. Yeah. So we, we, as I said before, we. We're going to find out more about yeah. David Hay, uh, more about David Hay as a fighter this Saturday than we are Tony Bellew. Tony Bellew, in a sense, has nothing to lose. He's going to make mm-hmm. a lot of money. Um, obviously, we retain his uh, WBC title at cruiserweight, and um, uh, but then he's going to have a tough <laughs> go back to a tough defence. But so yeah, mm-hmm. that, that, that's where it is. I think if, if, what he says to me, everyone is wondering what emphasis on this is David Hay what is he going to look like and what has he got left uh, mm-hmm. if, he look, if he looks crap um, dealing with Tony Bellew then the people are going to say how is he going to deal with someone like Joshua or, or Deontay Ward it's, mm-hmm. it's all about David Hay really mm-hmm. Talk, touch, touching on that point quickly if if uh, if David Hay does win is he is he definitely targeting anti Joshua Deontay Wilder considering that they've got mandatories upcoming soon regardless of Joshua's if he's successful past uh, Vladimir Klitschko and obviously Deontay Wilder's got to negotiate with with, but with the main event who does he fight next or does he or like, is he going to wait about until he spots free to fight them no, it's, it's, I mean it's interesting because he's he's been um, Holly ranked on fit and fairly as well obviously in a few of the governing bodies what he does next 
I mean, the WBO had him pretty much ranked number one, didn't they? But now, as we know, Parker is fighting Huey Fury. Uh, but David Hayes is poisoned too far behind that for the winner. And mm-hmm. he's um, Kubat Puluev is the IBF mandatory. The winner of Klitschko, Joshua, will have to fight him. So that's, that kind of takes him out of the equation for that for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. The WBA, I'm not sh- too sure where he is with them. I know he's ranked pretty much in the top 10 in all of them. Uh, WBA... Uh, could he fight... Could he fight... Could he fight Luis Ortiz, do you think? Well, I doubt that's going to happen because Ortiz is... I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure what's going on with him. He's apparently... He's, he was... I saw... Dillian White could fight um, Ortiz in the Eliminator. I, or, or the dub- and, and let's face it, Ortiz has waited around patiently for a long time for his, his I, shot at the, the super title, wasn't he? And and also he's been mandated by the WBA to find the winner of Joshua Klitschko as well. Exactly. So he, he's, I don't so, think he's going to roll over. And he's not getting any younger. He's going to want his shot. And rightfully so. So, so unless the WBA are going to make Ortiz fight another Eliminator, you would have thought that takes David Hayes' chance away from, from, from that. So WBC, we know Stavern is fighting, uh, 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 shockingly, is fighting again uh, for, for that title. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, what I'd like to see that, uh, for David Hayes is he has to be ordered to fight in an official eliminator against a legit heavyweight. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's what yeah, I want to uh, see next. Yes, and yes, and Tony Bellew is quite... It's quite black and white. He's got to fight the winner of Marius Bredis and Marco Hook, win or lose. Yeah, you know, what What would be shocking, and at the end of the day, money talks, let's face it, if you're getting a total shot, David Hay initially would have come back for two poor heavyweights and a pumped-up cruiserweight and got a heavyweight total shot. Money talks, and I wouldn't be surprised if we do we do see a uh, step aside money signed down the line and Hayes fighting in the this year in the title shot. But from my point of view, I'd like to see David Hay in with a meaningful heavyweight um, mm-hmm. and earn a, a, a fight that way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think, and I think everyone in boxing will echo those sentiments. Yeah. I think that's, uh, that is, a, that is a very fair comment and arguably the only comment anyone can have. Well, mm. and you know, Tony Bellew, it's not the, He's going to make a sh- you know shitload of money here. He's going to go back. He's got some, some tough options. You know, his cruiserweight face it, the cruiserweight yeah. division. He's a bit of a sleeper division, but there's some good names there. As we said, Huck and um, uh, Gassiev. Uh, I think those. He's those... got uh, uh, Marius Bradis, the Latvian, sorry, and Bradis, Marco uh, Hulk are oh, sorry, fighting yes. for are fighting for the interim on April the first in Germany, and the That's winner right. of that gets to face Tony Bellew, but mm. regardless of him there, he has Dennis Lebedev, he has Barack Gassayev, he has Alexander Ous. Yeah. And it's just it's just it's just it's just a division full of absolute monsters to be per- well, to be uh, to be fair. I, I liked before this we was said, you know, I, I want to see Tony Bellew in with some some big names to cruise division. Some unifications, and he's got plenty available. So you know, uh, we, we are here with this now. So that, that's what it is. But yeah, they're both. It's Tony Bellew, especially, I like to see him go go back to cruiserweight. Well, well yes. Should he lose? And uh, he's got some good options. Yes, in yes, in, yes, indeed. And moving on to the co-main event, another London versus Liverpool rivalry. We have the we have we have the seemingly enigma of what is O'Hara Davis, the WBC light welterweight champion. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I can't I cannot call it the super lightweight division. I can't. <laughs> but it's, like, it's, it's light welter. It's, it's always me light welter. <laughs> light welter. Thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. Someone someone supports my argument, but 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 he faces definitely is most vocal opponent today and arguably on paper his hardest test today in in former WBU champion British Commonwealth champion at super featherweight lightweight as well in Derry Matthews 
So a fight which has been bubbling on social media for oh for at least seven months beforehand, and it's fine, and it's got main. It's going to be on this uh, on this card. So we'll cut straight to the point on this. Good fight, a good fight for Harbour. It's definitely his biggest name on paper, and probably his hardest test as well. Do you think his style will cope well with Derry Matthews' relentless, brash, the in quotation marks, and to, and to name his moniker, dirty style? Yeah, yeah, oh, that's, that's without a doubt. This is, um, this, this is his acid test, you know, at, at this weight now. So uh, uh, I think it, it's, a, it's a good fight for Ohio Davis now. Really show what, uh, what he's worth. I mean, but, but what really, I think it, it all depends on what Derry Matthews has left. He's been in some tough fights mm-hmm. um, down the years, you know, and um, uh, you know, he's, he's sort of he's battle hardened. But you know, is he? Is he? I, I think he's had some last his last couple of fights against Luke Campbell and um, Flanagan, I believe, was the fight before that. I've, I've been. Mm-hmm. Um, He's been one of the big names in the division, um, and he's always going to be a mark for for a lot of the um, for the younger fighters coming through. Uh, and it's been uh, just well, I'll say as vocal bits. It's, it's, the build up has been uh, hilarious. Has, has, has been yeah, hilarious. You know, uh, Howard oh, Davies. You know, that's the uh, he's promoting himself in a in, in a different way. So uh, um, no, good, good, good fight and. Uh, um, it's, it's again an acid test for for Ohio Davis. I, I went to his last fight in Wembley. Um, uh, Scarpa, Sharpa, Scarpa, mm-hmm. um, and he boxed well there. Um, he's Scarpa was was tough, boxed well, but uh, you know Ohio just looked um, level above him. So I, I've got to go with a form maybe um, and go for I'm going for Ohio on a points decision here. Uh, there there is. There his record's quite misleading, really. I think he's, he's you know, he's, he's, he's got a couple of losses, but he's, he's, a, he's a tough fighter, durable. Um, uh, so, um, uh, it's over hard for me, yeah. I, are you in the camp of that the jump up to well, uh, to like well away for Derry? Would it benefit him in this fight? Because, like, it's commonly known that it's been. Struggling to make 135 for a while now. The only reason why he stayed at that weight was because Frank Warren promised him a title shot at the WBO in against Terry, against against Terry Flanagan. So, so I have to I have to seemingly disagree with you. I think I think Oliver Davis has completely lost his mind. He is. He is the proverbial emotional wreck, and I think they, and I think Oliver Davis is the kind of character which will bring that into the ring. And any fighter who brings their emotions into the ring with them is a fighter which is going to make mistakes and is sloppy. Oh, oh, Howard Davis for the most part, for the most part, at times in his fights has made sloppy mistakes. He often falls short with his shots at times, especially when he's loading up with a backhand right. That is that is seemingly wanting to develop as his trademark punch, but it simply don't work for that. And his jab, his jab's a little bit one pace, there's no variation to it. There's a there is a seemingly lack of head movement once he's in the pocket when he throws his shot. And those are and those are traits which Derry Matthews can exploit in a big way he's been a big puncher at whatever weight division he's been at whether that be at feather super feather lightweight he's got he has got the power to seriously trouble O'Hara Davis if O'Hara Davis does make mistakes I believe myself that if O'Hara Davis is switched on and on point he's a very good boxer when he wants to show it but I think he's too far gone and will want to go into a ring continuing his great bravado act of I'm the instructable all Harvard Davis. I'm going to I'm going to parade my WBC silver belt with pride like it's a real thing. And take his simply eye off the ball. And Derry Matthews 
in my opinion, will exploit that. Derek, Derek, Derek Matthews, in my opinion, is a very, very good boxer, a very, very undervalued boxer whose skills are often overlooked. Remember, this is a fighter who's boxed for England as an amateur for God knows how many years as an amateur. Very, very skilled technically, does the basics very, very well, and is tough as old boots. But, but I'm not ignorant to think that Derry Matthews now at his age, with all the wars he's been to, Gavin Reese and Derry Matthews spring straight to mind as a tough, grueling encounter. Tough against Terry Flanagan, outclass, and before that, his fight with Tony. Uh, with Tony Luis, the Canadian. He's been in a lot of wars. He oh, could very well be battle worn. He could be the, the term of far the time potentially I, catching up with it. I agree. I think that's why I, I touch on his that his record is very misleading. Mm-hmm. So he's been in some wars and bearing in mind he's he's pushing his mid thirties now. He's mm-hmm. getting he's he's it was a big lightweight, so he's stepping up now the 10 stone and yeah you know it, it's, it's not an easy fight for O'Hara but he's the fresher fighter mm-hmm. campaigned at the weight for, long, for longer so that that got kind of points uh, in, in that direction for me but it, it's not a a quick KO blowout that a lot of people I've seen on social media are suggesting for O'Hara mm-hmm. Davis yeah. he's going to be under as much pressure um, than Derry Matthews is Mm-hmm. Especially with, but I mean, he's going to put himself under a lot of pressure with the uh, bravado and, 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 the, and the crap he's taught. So, um, so the crap, I mean, just this is supposed part and parcel of boxing build up. But, uh, but th- th- that's why I see it, you know. And Derry's coming off a tough off loss against um, mm-hmm. Campbell. Was that two rounds, two or three rounds? Uh, three rounds. Three rounds, yeah. So um, th- that's how I see it. If Derry Matthews was campaigning at the weight for a lot longer. Uh, then maybe I don't want better indication, but no, I think oh, I was going to have to box his way to um, a tough and expected points win. Mm-hmm. And uh, and what I will say is is that O'Hara Davis is not a natural 140 pounds himself. He's only campaigned at like well uh, or three fights as well. He won the English title down at lightweight and has been guided. Very, very nicely by Eddie Hearn and his handlers into into positions such as the WBC silver, and that is credit to the people who handle him. I just think personally, it's a little bit undeserved, but that's a story for another day. And I'm not, and I am not, and I'm not the one to cry foul. I think, I think anyone's the, I think, achievements. I think the thing is Ben. I mean, that's that's undeserved. I think that that's that, that's a story for a lot of different. Aspects at the moment, isn't it? Well, top mm-hmm. fights, yeah. British fights. It, 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 it's a uh, well, we'll see. It's, it's certainly one of the more interesting fights on yes. the card. Yes, yes, it is, and it is the cold support. It's the chief. It's the chief support, and um, which which promises to be a very entertaining fight. And the and yeah, yeah. We will say the final fight we're gonna touch on of main in, of main importance is Birmingham's John Peg trains very very the almost a road warrior for the early part of his career was always on the road but has achieved a lot for such a relative young man as well in Sam in Sam Eggington stepping up in a in, ter- in terms of name, a huge step up is facing a two-time world, a, a two-time two-weight world champion. In one of my favourite fighters growing up as a as a kid growing up in 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 the Magic Man, Paulie Malinaje. When this fight got announced, I was thinking, "Whoa, whoa, is that a little bit too soon for Eggington?" Because Paulie is a very, very slick fighter. Very, very slick. And boxes well in the back foot, boxes, box, boxes well in the front foot. Very, very rapid, very, very quick, very, very sharp. And 
Sam Eggington in the past has struggled with them sort of fighters. Bradley Ski springs to mind, but Malinaj is a 36-year-old party Malinaj. This is not a 28-year-old, are they? Or the Malinaj which burst onto our scene by is Miguel Cotto. So it could be this case of right timing for Eggington to fight on a fighter of calibre of uh, Malinaj's stature. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, th- I think it's um, it's not one of those fights, isn't it, that that you just didn't see uh, uh, happening. Uh, is, is this a fight too soon? Um, no. Uh, you know, not uh, seen too much of Eggington in honesty, but I I did see um, he's a really good fight with um, Frankie Gavin last time out. You know, in in the trenches and this just just absolutely. Um, uh, T- took away the, the skills of Frankie Gavin, who um, renowned, a renowned amateur. But mm-hmm. uh, it, this is it, a perfect fight, I think, for, for Sam Egerton. You know, a, a name like Melanagi, who I think is a really, really um, good box, boxer. Of course, he doesn't carry much of a dig mm-hmm. on him, but um, uh, it's, I'm really sort of torn to in this one, really, what, what I... S- I see really as as, um, as a firm result. I mean, uh, uh, Malinaji's come built up a few wins. I think since he's um, mm-hmm. lost to, to, to Garcia, so he he's he's a man with, with a bit of form, and and, mm-hmm. and, and certainly the, the the more experienced. Mm-hmm. Tough, tough fight. I mean, I'm actually uh, going to the O2 on Saturday, so um, I'm it's one of one of the more int- intriguing fights. Mm-hmm. That I'm looking forward to watching, but I'm, I'm, I'm tough call. But maybe I'm going to have to edge with Melanaji just to, to, due to experience. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to have to go to the same. This is a man for the most part. He gets out of trouble. He's got very, very good mm. range and, vers- and versatility with his movement. He's another fighter who snipes in and out he picks his moments to attack and he's got to now because yeah. he's aging in years he's a very very intelligent fighter a lot of people uh forget about it. as he said he don't carry much of a dig but that is because of his well-renowned uh hand issues uh which happened going up when in when he was developing as a fighter it's, uh certainly is early early all the way up to his early 20s all the way up to his Late twenties, mm. early thirties, he always had hand issues, but but it's seemingly you don't win world titles in two different weight classes if you're not very good. What? what I mean, let's face it, exactly. he's been in, he's, he's, who, who hasn't he been in with? I mean, it's amazing. We got Ricky Hatton, Cotto, Danny Garcia, um, Khan. Khan, yeah, of course, Khan. You know, he's and he, he Zab always, Judy, yeah. so Zab Judy took a, a really good unbeaten record in. Um, uh, the guy that came back for thank you, Sanchenko. Uh, that uh, that that was abroad. I mean, he, mm-hmm. he's got the tools. Ring journalship. I mean, Eggerton's a big lad for the weight as well. Needy six foot mm-hmm. for um for, for welterweight. So he he's going to have the the size attributes. But yeah, um, it, as uh, their record suggests, it's not a knockout fest. It's it's basically. Uh, just a pure boxing chess match. So I, I, I got to edge Marilyn Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's going to be particularly close either. Mm-hmm. As I, as I, Eggerton's got to turn this fight into essentially a brawl uh, to have any success. Like the, like, like oh. the, pri- like the prime example of someone who took away uh, Eggerton's skills and attributes was... Skeet. Bradley Skeet, that was a beautiful that, performance by Skeet. Beautiful performance. I, I only had Bradley Skeet with losing yes, two that, rounds. That, that that is probably the perfect kind of um, way to fight him. Yeah, the, the, and the sort of way to, 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 to get an idea how this fight's going to go. I mean, that way Bradley Skeet fought. So um, I know. Uh, I mean, but what a name to have in your record if you can pull it off. You know. Uh, mm-hmm. um, so. Um, and it's and it and it is also fine. It's not like it's a name which is 
completely washed up. It's not like it's become a proper journeyman, but it's a buyer who's still extremely credible. It's not like he's took and beaten. He doesn't lose many fights full stop, Paulie Malinazzi. So well, I don't won, understand um, why people... So, sorry, sorry. Well, he won... Uh, it wasn't the, the Joshua White card. He won the European title. At, wait, no, uh, it, it showed some, such shows some magnificent skills. Uh, I, was, I was out there to witness that. So uh, I know yeah. that's what... Uh, a year and a bit ago now but he's still operating at a good level mm. uh, yes. and I think um, absolute credit to Eggington and his team for, for getting this fight and um, but yeah I, I just think it's, it's this is experience uh, we'll, we'll show yes indeed so and so to finish off uh, have you got any closing comments you want to say regarding this show uh, well I mean luckily I'm going to not so much the main event being competitive well in, in Possibly, but I think there's um it's be good to see uh, Katie Taylor who's um making her third uh, outing on, on the show. Uh, she's she's got a good future, and it sounds like they're going to push her into a world title this year in Dublin. That's that's what they're planning. Uh, mm-hmm. And there seems to be a lot of bit of a I think with these Olympians in this day and age now uh, taking a, a just a handful of pro fights and fighting for world titles is quite it's, it's quite astonishing really. Mm-hmm. Uh, and anything else to note on the cards? Um, but, uh, Frank, uh, Frank Buglione versus Ricky Summers. I heard that. It's uh, been canned. Ha, uh, has it been canned? Oh, I've, yeah. That has completely slipped past me. But Dave, uh, Dave Allen's fighting a uh, is not fighting uh, Ivan Trekovic. Uh, yeah. That has been cancelled. Is fighting. He's fighting uh, Dean Howe from Sheffield, ten and four. Well, so, oh, he's, I, is... I, did, I didn't know his opponent, but I mean, on 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 David Allen, I think I think it's good. It's good that he's uh he's keeping active. That you know, it, no one could begrudge him taking a few of these more say soft touches. He's he's been in with D- Dillian White and Lewis Ortiz, two you know, two tough fights. So. Um, he, he's he's still young now. He's got a lot to learn, so he's, he's just getting out and learn a few things, build a bit of confidence, uh, but um, and, and build towards a British title in uh, in 2017. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's interest. It's so it's intriguing times for for the right uh, for the right rhino and operation right and operation white right rhino to coin the phrase in general. So unless there's anything else I can think of on that. I, on, on this card, sorry, mm. not really. I think I, I think we've covered the fights of uh, main of main interest. Well, it's, obviously, you know, on, the, on the one more note on on this this also this dreaded pay per view argument we all have. It's it's not the deepest of cards to, to warrant that, but mm-hmm. it, it's there's some good fights in it nonetheless. But yeah. Um, uh, a few so mismatches, but uh, it's it's a uh, it's an alright card. So let's let's hope we have some um, let's hope we have some uh, some, some good uh, competitive fights. Yes, and 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 yes, indeed. And in the pay per view side of things, I've seen worse pay per view cards. We all mm. have. So you'll see worse. So. You'll see better. Are you are you, uh, are you paying for it? Uh, I will. Uh, I will be paying for it. I am. I. I I'm a man of credibility. <laughs> so, 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 so. On that note, Dan, I would like to thank you for your time, and I would, and I would recommend to anyone to follow Dan Frost on tw- on Twitter. His details will be published when. Oh, don't don't worry, Dan. It's only going to be your social media links and. And the and the Counterpunch podcast links as well. If you want to listen to their shows and follow their Twitter pages and Facebook groups. No, so no, on thanks, that note, that thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, uh, it's good to uh, talk to a lot of money boxing fans. So yeah, until next time. On on until next time. And on that note, thank you very much for listening, everyone.